Hello and welcome to my retro watches. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. I really do hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button next to it because that way you'll be alerted to any new content that I upload. Okay, with that out of the way, this is going to be a series of videos on the Seiko 7S 36 movement. Uh, the first uh, video will be the uh, strip down, so showing you how to take it apart. And then of course the second uh, or maybe even the third video as well because it might break down the assembly into two videos will be the assembly where I will show you how I rebuild it I'll do the calendar side and I'll do the motion side I'll show you where I'm oiling and how I'm doing that we'll do some close-ups on the microscope pretty much the same sort of thing I was doing most of my videos and this is uh, targeted for a reference for people who are wanting to attempt this particular move themselves I've got a great candidate it's not working and a watch that's not working needs to work, doesn't it? So hopefully I can get it going. It doesn't need any new parts and it just needs a service. Of course, we'll find all that out. So stay tuned. We'll cut to the bench next where we'll start the uh, disassembly. Okay then guys, here we go for the strip down of the uh, 7S36. You can see the watch in front of me now. Um, and it's got a lot of potential, this one, I think. I didn't pay a lot for it. I paid less than $20. Uh, but I will make a confession now that I bought it. I had a look inside. Uh, it wasn't running at all. There was a problem with the balance. Uh, but also the rotor on the watch said, an S, uh, said a 7S26. So it sprung the element of doubt in my mind that what the movement was in there might actually be completely different. Um, so I didn't want to take a chance. So I did buy a um, 7S36 donor which you can see here. And I got this from the Speed Timer Collection. It's actually got a lovely dial of its own. And all I've done in preparation really is I've just taken the movement from this and I've put it in there. Okay, so I am, I wanna keep it all original. So you can see here 7S26A written on the rotor. Now it could be, it's just the rotor's different. Um, but at the time this happened uh, when I was out of action, so I couldn't really strip this movement to find out. And speed timer, I, again, I, I paid very little, less than $20 for a 7S36. And granted, it's equally not working, but between the two, potentially here, we can make one good watch. Um, other things to note on this particular watch is that I'm intending to try and repaint the um, the markers on the bezel, and I'll even reloom the little pip at the top there to try and make it look a bit nicer. It's missing its bracelet, but then no surprise really there from where I've bought it from. It's very typical. Uh, it's got a lovely textured dial. You can just about see there. A couple of scuffs on the crystal, but not too bad. There is some sort of clouding that maybe you can see there in the light, which I'm hoping to polish out with some diamond polish a bit later on. Uh, it's a bit dirty, but that can all be taken care of as part of the service. And it's got a, a display back on it as well, which is quite uh, neat. You can see the, the movement inside. And it does run every now and again. I just saw the balance move there very briefly. So it has got a slight pulse. It just needs some major hospital surgery. Uh, so without further ado, we'll get the movement out of the case and we'll start the disassembly. So to get the movement out, uh, we just need to remove the case back, which I've already pre-loosened. Uh, again, if you are trying this for the first time, a simple little case back tool like this that can expand and move those pins is all you'll need really, unless it's very tight. Um, very cheap things to buy on the internet, especially eBay. Uh, before I do move the movement, uh, I find it good practice on these type of Seikos is to remove the rotor because it tends to get in the way otherwise. And for the rotor, you need a fairly decent size uh, screwdriver. And we just want to get it in there. You can't really see that, of course. I'm just trying to put it in that gap. And turn it, of course, until it is released. move it away and put it in a safe place. Uh, I've got my usual 
a movement tray, one of these here, lots of different holes in it. Okay, so now we've got that off, uh, we need to remove the crown and the stem. And to do that, we don't want to pull the stem out at this stage. The actual little pip to make it come undone is just here. And you'll see that if I pull this, it goes, and if I push it back in, it comes out again. So I'm just going to put my tweezers in there, he says. And that's released the stem. Have to excuse me, but one of my lights has just decided to fall down. It is literally my filming light, and it's held on by, by some Velcro and uh, sticky velcro at that so it's not, it's not doing a great job at the moment but there we go uh, right now the um look at that it's moving again now that's out we need to try and release some of the movement and sometimes they come out quite easily they have a little plastic um, movement um surround here to fit it in and sometimes they can be tricky sometimes they're not and once I've got it out a little bit I just like to turn my cushion over turn it upside down and it comes out like so so for the time being we'll put the case away on with the job at hand so uh, we want to try and remove the hands now uh, get those out of the way and I've got a little dial guard here which I'll try and slide under can be a little bit um, of a challenge sometimes because the the hour indices get in the way or other decorative parts get in the way but once you think you've covered it enough now I'm going to bring in my um, hand remover a very cheap one-off uh, eBay I don't particularly rate these too much they're good for starting uh, I'm actually already on my third and thinking why didn't I buy a more expensive one uh, incidentally um, it's not going to show on film maybe I can try and persuade it I actually highly polish the ends of mine there we go you can just sort of see it there uh, and that's just to help again uh, not scratch anything that you don't want scratching There's the first two off. And I've tended to find that sometimes the hour hands are difficult with the with the guard in the way. Certainly trying to use these sort of tools because the guard becomes uh, too thick for the tool to get underneath. So if you just bear with me a moment, I'm going to take that away where I can see it. There we are. It's removed. Of course, this is going to be a watch for myself, uh, so I, you know I don't want to damage it at any point in time unnecessarily. So now that is off, we will uh, remove the dial, and the dial on these is friction fit, so there's no screwed feet. Uh, we are literally just going to get a small screwdriver uh, in my case I'm going to use a yellow end and I'm just going to prise you can just see that there prise that up in a few different spots very carefully there's only two feet on the dial but of course the dial is a really important part of the watch almost arguably the most important part the one bit that you don't want to damage there we are, the dial is off in one piece. I'm trying not to touch it too much, so I don't make it dirty. And there's the rear, and you can just see the two pins there, or feet. And once again, we'll move the dial, put the dial somewhere safe. So now we're looking at the movement, or the calendar works of the movement. And at this point in time, I now need to put it into a movement holder so that I can then work on it uh, a bit better. And I've now got a new, uh, well, a new, I say a new movement holder. It's this one here. 
This is a, a vintage one. It was sent to me um, by a member of the group, uh, Mr. Pete Hurst. As a kind uh, gesture from him. And I'm not going to say it replaces the version one that I've got or the typical one everybody uses. I still like this one. Um, but I'm yet to use this one in anger. And so tonight's the night where I'm going to use it properly. And what I like about it, uh, it's fully adjustable, as we can see here, just by turning this. And then once you've got it into position underneath, there's this, and that just tightens it up. So once you've got it in, uh, you can tighten it, which is absolutely great because the version one, as much as that does hold, um, what I tend to find is it also slips out sometimes and that can be quite frustrating certainly at critical moments when you're trying to do certain screws and it, the movement moves completely from the holder and you run the risk of damaging things with your screwdrivers at that point so i do like the idea of this one uh, but i do need a lot more testing on it to be sure that i'm 100 uh, percent thinking this is the best thing ever <laughs> so onwards and upwards we now need to remove the um the calendar works here, so first of all, we need to remove the day wheel, which is this one in the center here. And that is held on by what we call the C-clip. Uh, it's just a clip in the shape of the C, hence the name. And to do that, we want to get a screwdriver, a very fine one again, and just get under and prise a little bit. This one is quite loose. So I'm just going to use a bit of Rodico. Let's see if we can't, oh, it's removed the uh, the day wheel as well. So there we go. Rodico is a great um, product. Um, I guess in watchmaking, it's a bit like WD-40. It's got 101 different uh, uses, all of them brilliant. Okay, so now the um, calendar works is off. Well, the, the dial, the I can't even say it, the, the stay wheel is off. We now need to get out the calendar works. Right, the calendar works themselves. First of all, we need to remove a cover plate here. And this is held on. We have one, two, three screws. And then we have this very small cross-headed screw down here. Now, I don't actually have a screwdriver small enough for that uh, in my cross-head selection. Uh, but I did get one of my older versions, or an older blade. And again, I can't get it to focus, maybe I've put my hand in the way. As you can see, I just filed down the sides, made a bit of a point, and now it is almost the perfect fit, uh, which is a, <laughs> a great uh, way to improvise. So we're going to move, remove these three screws, and you're going to see my finger rather than the screws. Now again, I say a lot in my videos, removing screws, certainly if you're not used to it, do them one at a time and remove them one at a time. So unscrew it and then remove it. If you leave them in place and then you slip with the last one and you move the uh, whatever you're taking off, there's a good chance you could lose the screw. And under magnification, like I am now, the screws are quite big. But in reality, the things are tiny and you don't want to lose them uh, because they're really hard to replace. Um, and they're even harder to find in your carpet if that's where they're going to be. So the last one is the little cross head. And this is the smallest screw that I think I've come across. I've got some magnetism actually, which is not good. That is, I think, the smallest screw you come across in a Seco that I've seen, anyway. Now they're, they're away, this cover should, there we go, just lift straight off. And that's exposing the inner workings of the calendar. Uh, so now we can also, or should be able to remove the um, date wheel. It is engaged with the click at the moment, which I'll explain probably in the rebuild. There we go. So that is off, and now we're left with another little cover plate to cover the um, 
this little wheel here, which has got what we call fingers on, these little notches here, and that actually controls the day and the date wheels at 12 o'clock. So when it clicks over 12, that's what makes them move. And then these little nylon wheels here are also to do with the quick set of the date. So when you want to set the time, um, you know, manually. Uh, so this is not held on by anything. It's just got some little pins or location pins that it rests on. And it's sometimes tucked in on the, uh, the date correcting wheel over here. There we go, that's off. I'll just move on to the next compartment. Now then, you do want to try and make a log. So if you're doing this, of course, I always say, take many, many, many photos. Um, the positioning of these is sort of critical, knowing which way, certainly this one is, is going, it's got an angle to it. Um, they're very easy to put back into position, but it's making sure they're in the position the right way. Because if you get them the wrong way and then when you rebuild, it won't work. And then you've got to strip it all back down again. So plenty of photos are the key. These just come straight out. As you can see. Dead easy. Uh, then we're left with this here. This is the minute wheel. And that will just slide off. Sorry, that is not the minute wheel. <laughs> that is the hour wheel. This is the minute wheel. And usually I like to get that one now with a bit of Rodico again. And then we have the intermediate wheel. This has got two gears. If we can get it to focus, there we go. And then the date driving wheel which again just comes straight off so we're almost done on this side straight away we have the cannon pinion that's left and for the cannon pinion excuse me i just need another pair of tweezers for that um, as you can see it's there sticking up proud you've always got to be a little bit careful because just at the very top there is the what we call the fourth wheel or the seconds wheel so the second hand sits on that so you've got to be careful when you remove this that one you don't try and you don't bend anything uh, and equally you don't try and push that at the top and we're at risk of breaking anything so what i you can buy dedicated tools for for cannon pinions uh, they're very expensive you can try and use a hand pulling tool that sometimes works uh, you can try and use your fingers for instance i just like to get a thicker pair of tweezers I put it round them and I pull up and there we go, straight off. Sometimes they're a bit stiffer than others. Uh, this one was quite easy. And again, there we go. You can see that pin sticking up. So that is the calendar works side stripped down. So I'll now turn the movement over and we'll attack the, well, actually that said, I've got a good feeling that the clutch wheel, which is this, uh, was going to fall down uh, if I turned it over and then also the um, driving wheel there doesn't want to come out so it will come out when I turn it over so we'll turn the watch over I'll set it up and then we'll disassemble the motion side okay you're looking at the motion side now I've removed the uh, movement um, ring that holds it in the case itself. That uh, just clips off. And of course, the little driving wheel came out as well as part of the keyless works. So now I want to remove the balance. And the balance is, in my eyes, the most sensitive and most precious part of the movement. The little hairspring in there is so delicate and fine and it controls just about everything that it's good practice to remove this as soon as possible and of course as carefully as possible yet it's relatively straightforward to do so it has one screw on the top there of which is there of course you're going to see most of my fingers and then once that's out first of all put it somewhere safe 
and then to get the balance out I'm just going to get the tweezers so I'm going to loosen it off the top first and then I'm just going to carefully remove it I've actually got hold of it by the ring a little bit by, by the balance wheel sorry as you can see not necessary to do that I just have a knack of doing it where it doesn't dangle around and, and run the risk of getting tangled into anything so now that's out we can sort of breathe a sigh of relief and move on to the next part. So we need to remove uh, all this mechanism here. And this is all to do with the transfer of power from the rotor. Uh, it goes through uh, this here. And this little wheel, basically, the motion of the rotor turns this wheel. And then this wheel uses these things called pull levers or magic levers. And they will rotate this wheel which in turn drives this, which is called the ratchet wheel. And underneath the ratchet wheel is the main spring itself. So that's how the automatic mechanism works. Um, let me just see if I can move that again. And you can just, maybe you can see those poor levers. I can't tell looking at the screen from this angle. Um, and I'm also thinking it maybe is it's trying to, let's just try it like this. There we go, so you can see it now, can't you? And that's, that's unidirectional, so if we're going backwards or forwards, it's moving, and that's called the click, and that will click over, so it's another tooth engaged, so it's a little bit tighter, is the main spring. Now we do need to let down the power of the main spring, and the only way to do that on these is first of all to remove this uh, driving wheel here and this is marked with these three slots for a reason and the, that reason is it's a left-handed thread so it's the opposite way so I can't get purchased with that screwdriver um, you are just going to turn as if you're tightening and of course you're not you're loosening okay and remove that and then that gets to the wheel. Sometimes these can be uh, a little bit uh, stiff to remove. You've got to bear in mind that they are engaged on this, on the pull lever. So you want to be a little bit delicate about how you do it. And you can see just underneath, there's the, the gear that drives it. Right, so now we've got to let down the power. And the only way to let down the power on these particular Seikos is to hold the click. So the click, or what you can see of the click, is this little bit here. So we're going to put a screwdriver in the slot here and hold on to the screwdriver. Turn it a little bit so that the click starts to move. And then we can grab it with the tweezers and pull it out of the way. So then all the tension of the mainspring is then in the screwdriver. And you can let that down by hand. Uh, in a controlled manner. It's quite difficult for me to catch it on film. I've tried dozens of times in all my videos and my fingers are always in the way. But if I put the screwdriver, oops, I didn't want to slip. So if I put the screwdriver in there like so, and maybe you can see, see how the click moves. So once it moves, I'm going to catch it. And then I'm just going to release that spring tension. As you can see, I'm trying to control it with my fingers so it's not whizzing off. And I'm quite proud of myself because that's probably the best I've ever filmed that. So <laughs> I'm actually really pleased. So there we go. So that's now perfectly safe. There's no power and no surprises left in this movement. So we just need to undo the screw, which is on top of there. Let's go back to normal. Every screw is now the same. There's only one left-handed screw in the whole movement. So we'll remove that. Put it again safely somewhere and then the ratchet wheel will just come off like so. And now we can turn our attention to the train bridge. So the bit that covers all the main driving wheels inside and that is held on by three screws like so. Don't worry about this for now, we'll deal with that in a moment. So we just unscrew those.
gone a bit too over the top with that one and it fell out. Now it does pay to use, well, I would, I'd like to say good quality screwdrivers, um, but just try to use the most appropriate screw screwdriver for the size of the screw because it lessens the slippage. And by slippage, if you're new, just means the screwdriver coming out of the screw slot and with you having a bit of pressure on it, you can end up scratching some components or even damaging components, which is not very desirable. So now those are out of the way, this will or should just lift off. There we go, like so. And then we can examine it a little bit and see if there's any dirt, which so far I can't see at all. And let's just have a look into, into here, to the motion itself. It does look a bit dodgy in places, but so far I can't see anything that's stopping it uh, particularly. Um, but perhaps we'll look at the main plate right at the very end of the video under the microscope just to see how much dirt there might actually be there. So now all we've got to do really is there's, there's a couple of screws left to do, um, but most of these parts will lift out. So we can take the click, which just sits in there like so. Uh, this is then the fourth wheel or the second wheel, which is what we were talking about when we did the other side. There you can see it. And then we have the third wheel which is there, that has a little gear on the bottom of it. And then the barrel, and the barrel contains the mainspring. Now, as much as I will take the mainspring out of the barrel, and I will clean it and service it, for the sense of this video, I won't take it out. Uh, on the video, that is, because I've done videos of these already, and they are quite fiddly. Uh, but there's the barrel. And then we have the um, the pallets. So the pallet fork is under these two screws here. And this is the bit that controls that that'll click back and forth. Basically, it controls everything uh, to the, um, the balance itself. So these are all critical parts. These have got two quite short uh, stubby screws, usually very identifiable from the rest. And then once they're undone, it'll just lift off. like so, and then you can see this is the pallet fork itself in situ here. And that will just again lift off. You will need to inspect these sort of parts, they're very small, you wanna look at the pivots, make sure they're still there. But for now, we'll just move that out of the way. And then we have the center wheel bridge and the escape wheel, so it's one screw. And sometimes the center wheel bridge comes off straight away and other times it can be a little bit stiff. And I think it's just because, sorry, I'm doing it off screen, has a little location pin at the back here. And you never wanna force anything. Forcing a part will mean that it could damage something. Okay, again, I didn't realize I was off screen. I beg your pardon for that. Hopefully you saw some of it. Uh, the 
the escape wheel can be removed put safely away and then the center wheel will just come straight out so all we've got left is the keyless works uh, which are unusual on these sort of movements because they're on the the motion side rather than the calendar works but again still very basic stuff uh, we've got two screws to remove the, uh, the the setting lever spring and then underneath that we'll have the setting lever and the yoke would be good if I found the right size screwdriver I'm getting some slippage which is not desirable at all so I mentioned slippage earlier and now you've just seen it and seen it again and the yoke sorry the setting lever is still engaged and that was not intentional at all so I do apologize for that It was under tension. I should have took the tension off beforehand, and I didn't. So you'll see my mistakes uh, in front of you as well. But those are the three components. Rest assured, when we go to the rebuild video, you'll see how they locate and interact with one another. So that is the movement itself disassembled. Uh, there is one last thing to do, which is the to remove the wheel and the pallet at uh, the um, pull levers from from this and it has a little tiny let's see if we can zoom in a bit like a little circlip and the circlip is removed like so excuse my fingers and then this wheel can be removed with the pour lever. Lots of dirt and grime on that particular part, as you can see. And that is essentially just dried old oil that's working its way, probably making itself a bit abrasive now. So there we have it. That is... The strip down of the Seco 7S36. As I say, what I'll do now, just as a little bit of an afterthought, is to put the um, main plate itself onto the microscope and have a quick look and see how dirty it actually is. Okay, we're on the microscope and we're looking at the uh, center wheel uh, jewel uh, from the uh, motion works side. And you can see there, let's just try and find something to point with. All this here is dried oil and of course on the jewel as well. Dried oil will cause drag. And what I'm also looking for here is in case we've got any broken jewels. So again, in here, there's quite a lot of debris. And all of this is going to make it poor running. So you can see here, this has got a lot of dried oil, dirt. This particular jewel as well doesn't look too good. Now what I will do is I'll probably do before and after shot so you can see this now. Uh, but then once I've cleaned it all, Put it back on the microscope then and then you can see the improvements that are made by cleaning so that's that side i'll just flip it over and then we can look at the other side okay and here we are on the calendar work side looking at where the barrel was sitting and it's important to look at the barrel hole because uh, when you are 
just trying to get something again into here. You're looking to see if there's any wear in that hole, um, either on the metal itself or whether the hole is actually slightly out of round, because that will indicate that the barrel is moving around and not too good. But what I will say is that looks pretty good to me. It's one of the dire shock jewels and that looks okay. And then we're just, let's try and get this into focus. So again, there's lots of dirt really. So, so far I'm not too alarmed. Uh, I'm not seeing anything that I haven't seen before. So I'd be safe to say that um, with a really good clean, uh, this watch should run fine, unless there's a problem with the balance or any of the uh, train wheels. Uh, I will inspect all parts before assembly. But for the tent of this video, um, that's it. That's the disassembly of the Seiko 7S36. I really do hope you found this uh, informative and useful, certainly if you're trying this for your first attempt on this particular movement, that you can use this video as a reference. So if you do, please give me a thumbs up. Um, always appreciate all the likes that you give me. Of course, leave plenty of comments down below. I do read all of them. If you've got a question on this particular movement and I think I can answer it, then leave it down below and I'll try and uh, reply to you that way. And of course, don't forget uh, to join the Facebook group if you're on Facebook. So search for Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. Uh, plenty of plenty of people in there, uh, all watch nuts and some professionals too. We're all there to help you and we're all learning every single day. There's about five and a half thousand different people in there now from all over the world. So definitely worth checking out if you're on Facebook. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. The assembly videos will be coming very soon. Bye for now.